Hello and welcome back to All for United. This is the three point preview because what is the point in doing a preview if we're not looking forward to getting three points? There we go, something like that anyway. We're, no, we're there. Do the, uh, oh. and, <laughs> and uh, we've got the A team back Karthik, Temi, and Joe joining me. So this is going to be a fun one. And as ever, we start at point number one, which is Karthik, the need for a reaction. The fan base was down after the defeat yeah. the other night to PSG. Uh, I think the players look slightly down as well. Well, PSG celebrated like they just literally won the Champions League. Uh, so we need to react, don't we, this weekend with a win against West Ham? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to see a, a symbol of what the fan base was like last night, just go watch our match reaction and see what Joe was doing. Because he was like the he was like the Irish Hulk. That's what I thought. Uh, except in ter- instead of turning green, he was turning red. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we do need a reaction. I mean... You know how our fan base is. It's so flip flop. When you win a game, I mean, you know, you've seen me. When we win a game, I think we're going to win everything. And when we lose, I'm not as as uh, pessimistic as some of our fans, but some of them do tend to go on the manager's back a little bit. So, if we were to lose two in a row, that would put a bit more pressure, and it would be another case of oh, is all his job under threat and all this nonsense. So, I could I could do with us winning another one, simply because number one, it continues our our away form. Um, yeah. And of, of course, we, we're on a good run in the league, actually. We've won, I think it's four in a row now. So we, we do need to, to, to continue that form. And, and momentum, of course, is a big thing in football, especially going into, if we're, if we're sticking on the Champions League train of thought, next week against Leipzig, a game we have to win, you'd ideally want to go in it off the back of a win. So, yeah, a response is vital. Yeah, a massive need for a response. Uh, Joe, let's come over to you. Uh, are you excited to see us play again? Because you was wound up last night, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I was a little bit... Um, yeah, wound up is probably the most polite word I could use for how I was uh, yesterday evening. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm feeling good. And look, we're guaranteed a win now because we... If I think we should all say... Personally, we should say Ollie out because every time we do that, he tends to pull out an amazing victory and goes on an incredible run. So, like, let, let's just do that for the crack because it'll mean we'll definitely win the Champions League and the Premier League, as, as Karthik has said so many times. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to the game, to be honest. Uh, I, I think we will, like, it's been a while since we, we've done West Ham, and I, I think it'll come this weekend. I think we played very well last night. The result didn't say everything that happened on the pitch, um, and I and I hope that Fred Fred will play on the weekend and he deserves to play. But let's hope there's some sort of symbolism that Solskjaer will take him off after two minutes and just kind of look <laughs> and, ju- and, and and just and just point to the camera and go, I listened. I listened. <laughs> Do you know what though? On that, on that, <laughs> if at half time he did put the onus on Fred um, and he said to him, "Look, I'm going to leave you on." Because I trust that you're going to stay on your feet. You're doing such a good job for the team. I don't want to take you off. I want to keep you on. Um, you know, the next time Fred gets a yellow card in the first half, Ollie is taking him straight off. Fred has done nothing here for his credibility whatsoever as a footballer in the eyes of his manager, because there is no way that Ollie's ever taken that risk again. I mean, he shouldn't have taken it anyway. We were drawing one all at home with two, again, defensive midfielders on the pitch. <laughs> PSG were there to be had. We should have stuck on a more creative player at half time, just to just for the double double whammy. A, to go out there and get the win, but also yeah. B, to take off the guy who had a yellow card who you just knew. We Was there yeah. any United fan out there who didn't see him getting sent off? I think there was, every United there fan. Was, there, no, there was no one with eyesight who, who knew that Fred wasn't going to get sent off. Well, know? Joe, I, I heard that apparently Temi saw red like about Fred as soon as he got that yellow card. But then he looked in the mirror and he's actually looking at his... Uh, at his, his <laughs> do-rag. I learned that. His I learned that yeah. He's looking yeah, at his do-rag instead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go on, Terry. Talk to me. How important is it for a reaction and what, what kind of approach do you want to see Oli take at the London Stadium or whatever it's called now? Yeah, no, it's it's really important. It's really important. But I mean, obviously, we say that after every loss, that every, you know, every reaction is really important. But um, I think we just we need to find. Like, it feels like it's just like I keep on beating a. It's like beating a dead horse. We need to find some level of consistency where we're challenging in all competitions. Like we're right now in the Premier League, it almost feels like we. I mean, obviously, we're not that, that far off the top. But if we let's say we draw against West Ham and our and our, you know, the people who are challenging at the top get three points, it feels like it just feels like we're in a weird spot again. And I don't want that. I really don't want that for the team, especially out of coming off of four off the bounce and then 
you know, I thought we played okay versus PSG. If you look at the total 90, um, I thought we played good. Um, and for us to get, then go and, you know, lose to PSG, then let's say draw or lose to West Ham, it's just not, it's not what you want. It's really not what you want, you know, especially when you're trying to build momentum um, where you've been struggling to find that, you know, throughout all these tenures. So this 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 um this game on Saturday is huge. West Ham's no joke. They're I watched them against Villa. Um this um was it was it dirt was was it a was it a midweek game or was it a Monday game? I can't even remember, but it's they look good. Yeah Sunday was it Sunday they look good. They look they look I mean they're gonna again this is gonna be a fight. This is gonna be one of those scrappy old school um junkyard dog fights and we need to be ready for it. Temi, would you say this would be a game that we would lose last season? Yeah, um, but I would also say this would not shock me if <laughs> – I don't want to be – yeah, you know, it wouldn't shock me if we lost this game. You know, just because they have they have a midfield that's very, very combative. Um, it's kind of – I don't want to – it's not similar to Southampton because the players are different, but it's just you need to be ready for the fight. And I, this is something that um, – we struggled with early on in the season big time and then ollie kind of got the grip of it you know got a grip of it and we've been we've been winning we've been winning the midfield fights and that's why we've been winning games um yeah you know, 100 percent you know i'm i'm i've been pretty critical of scott um but i think he should i uh, he, he might need to play you know I, I think he might need to play again you know because he played decently against psg and i know if scott's in there uh we have a really good chance of winning the fight. And that's no disrespect to yeah. Donnie. That's no disrespect to um to Paul. You know what I'm saying? Those are some of those are, you know, those are world class players and they're better than Scott. But sometimes in a Premier League game, you need to you just need a scrappy, disgusting, ugly win. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and Mourinho would say you don't need to be a world class footballer or an incredible tactician to be a bastard. That's what he always get, yeah. kept going on about, didn't he? In the Amazon documentary, that he wants to see his team be bastards, go out there, really get a grip on the game, and battle to the end. But but Karthik, you know, you've got a much more tactical mind than than me. Why is it so important to bring the fight to a team in a game like this, like going away to somewhere like the London Stadium? Why, why is it so important? Is it because it gives your attacking players the chance to go and do what they do best, or is it the fact that you win? that midfield battle and, and obviously winning a midfield battle is key to victory in any match right yeah i think it's a bit of both i mean if you bring aggression into any game it's about bringing the right amount of aggression you don't want to send them out there to just kill them and get loads of red cards especially after what happened against psg you don't want to do that but you also want to warn them of the kind of game they can expect because while psg would would take a challenge and go down to try and run a foul the team we're going to play this weekend are probably going to give it back. And and that's a completely different kind of mentality that you need to have. So whether it's up front as the strikers in the press where you have to be aggressive, whether it's at the back where you're going for that header, with whether you're in midfield going for a 50-50, that kind of attitude can really help you out. And especially a team against West Ham that we struggled at in the past, I'm sure we'll discuss that later on. Um it is somewhere that we need to provide this kind of performance. And it's the kind of performance I enjoy watching a lot because as a football fan, you want to see your team giving a hundred percent. You want to see them battling on the pitch. So, definitely, it is important. And quite frankly, to 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 sort of point out why I mean a reason where they could bring this aggression from. Just point out the shit music that they play before games. I mean, they blow <laughs> bubbles for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. That's that awesome. bubble stuff, man. That is soft. That is <laughs> um, Joe, let me come over to you. Get, d- Karthik hit on it there a little bit about um, how great it is sometimes to watch a performance where your team is giving 100%. Yeah. Sometimes that's more satisfying, isn't it, than watching yeah. a fluid Pep Guardiola ticker tacker in, in my Barcelona team in, in yeah, fashion. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's great to go out there and watch, you know, Scott McTominay and Fred really take take control of a game by gripping it. Harry Maguire flying in with, with tackles, yeah. you know, and it, it's just as rewarding for fans, that, isn't it? Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like there's, like last night, what we saw was, um, I I was very very proud of the performance we put up because I thought it was up until whatever it was sixty fifth minute, it was such an even game where we were the better team with two. More, it felt that, like that's not that's not how an even game works. <laughs> it, it, it does in my mind. Okay, it does, yeah. it's like yeah yeah yeah. No, we won that nil nil draw. Yeah, really it's like when somebody says, I got all the answers on the test right except for two. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like ESPN <laughs> saying Liverpool are joint top of the league when they're second on goal difference. Yeah, I, I exactly would say, Ben, right. when you say you have never won an in-all draw, clearly that's why you're an English fan and not an Irish fan. I am. Oh, my, here we go. Yeah, we got one, 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 per video, one, one per video. One per video. I have had several <laughs> Irish games. <laughs> Do you know what, Joe? You are going to be ruined, right? You, you, I know, you literally, I know. you're coming across semi drunk, and when this is going to go out, it's going to be midday, and everyone's going to be like, Joe has lost the plot. He's drinking heavily after that defeat last night. I haven't, I haven't slept in days. Yeah. Meanwhile, Semi's drinking out of like what well, looks like a beer pong cup. Like he's, he's just finished around a beer pong. And he's just sinking that shot. But see, the problem is, Temi is, uh, you know of American descent. So like, he's not associated with being an alcoholic. So me burping mid sentence is most of the viewership <laughs> going, yeah, this is, this is about type. Yeah. Th this makes sense. Temi's, you know? Temi's coming they... off of this afterwards and going, those Irish are disgusting. Yeah, right? exactly. They're burping everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's get back onto the football. We were talking about ugly, yes. winning ugly yeah. and winning the battle. Yeah. Go on, Joe. Get yeah. Back yeah. Into it. Uh, like I was saying, I've had several positive nil all draws as an Irish fan, but moving forward from that. Yeah. Look, it's all about getting victory at the end of the day. And, and last night when we were playing, I felt that for a long stretch, it took us a while to get into it, maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe after the goal. But once we were in it, we were in it to win it. And we, I thought so many opportunities to really kill off the game and really put a, a stranglehold. And I was so proud. I was looking at this team. I genuinely was looking at this team being like, I am not afraid for anyone to come to us. Because PSG, on paper man for man, are as good as any team in Europe. Any team. Okay? Now, you will look at other teams and go, they are better drilled, like Bayern Munich are better, uh, blah, 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 are better, better. Okay, guys, just at least pretend. I just, I just, I'm going to presume don't, you're I dancing. Just, the reason why I'm shaking my head is because that assumption comes off the back of how great Neymar and Mbappe are. And I think Mbappe is great, but I think Neymar and their, last year, and their form last year, but you know. Yeah, well, and to be fair, and this is what I pointed out, Joe, you were obviously complimenting our performances, the chances we created, actually how yeah. we're winning that battle. Tell me, I think, I think you said that the other day as well, up to like the 60th minute, our midfield was winning the battle. Um, let's not forget, they lost three games the whole of last season in, in the French League. I think they lost exactly. one in the Champions League, got to the semi-final. Like, they are actually no joke PSG, and we completely controlled them in Paris in their home stadium, and then we've done the same thing last that's the night. Time. That's the second time. They got, they've gotten to the final. You said semi-final twice. I don't know oh, why. Oh, sugar, sorry. They, they, they were runners-up. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just saying. That's just proof. No one remembers just... the runner-up for the final. <laughs> but that's, exactly. that's what I'm trying to say. Look, you can say whatever you want. You can give all your little shaky heads. But PSG were finalists last season. Okay, and they basically easily, we play yeah. like that. Yo, just to round up your your point yes, here, which thank you. you can say afterwards so that you win this. Uh, if we play like that against West Ham, we'll beat them. Go on, you can say it. Um, look, if we play like that against West Ham, I think we'll beat them. That's a bold claim, Joe. Nice one. Brilliant. I love that. Um, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about our form at West Ham because we were talking about this at the start before we came on. Um, I, I'm convinced that West Ham is the worst place we've played in the last like five years. And we went back on and had a look. And, and Temi, you dug into this with me. So I think the last time we won there in the Premier League was in 2017. I think it was the start of 2017. Yeah, 2nd of January 2017. But I've dug deeper. Whilst Joe was talking, he's going on for ages, so I'm going deeper. Um, always goes deeper. Hello, <laughs> Carpet. Where did that come from? In research. In research. Whoa. whoa. Um, in the Premier League, right? Wait, we were have... researching was Ben researching. <laughs> Can I just say, I'm really proud of this research. Let me finish. Right. Go on. We've won once there in six Premier League games at West Ham away from home. So that will that will cover the London Stadium and also Upton Park, right? So that one in six um, at Upton Park. We've won four out of 12 games away to West Ham since 2010 in all competitions. So we've won only four times away to West Ham in the last decade. Remember Rooney score from the halfway line? Hey, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. So forget the record, that doesn't matter. No one, no one reads stats like I do. Um, but yeah, so we've won there four out of 12 games, so we've won in all competitions, uh, in the last decade, which is a horrendous record, yeah. Karthik. So when the odds are stacked against Donny, we always come out on top, right? But but talk to us a little bit about, about our away days at, at West Ham. Um, 
I blame the bubbles going in people's eyes. It could affect <laughs> goalkeepers. It could affect <laughs> defenders. It could affect anyone on the pitch. So who, also, that's just tin pot. Who blows bubbles before a game and who sings about blowing bubbles? That's tin pot in itself. That's the worst chant I've ever heard. Might be one of the worst chants in football. I'm sorry, but that, that's that's my point on it. You, say, you come to expect some tactical genius from me. No. Fuck all your bubbles. Fuck your silly song. Fuck off, West Ham. Wow, I feel like we've really ventured so, oh, West Ham and, yeah. and it's a shit, and it's a shit stadium. Why, why are they seen so far away from the pitch? Oh. Imagine having that as your home stadium. You're, you're going to watch your team play. You're going to get behind them, and you can't even see them. I can't believe I'm going over to the American of the group to try and be sensible about this. But, um, <laughs> Demi, can you give a sensible suggestion as to why our waveform at West Ham might be awful? Um. I'm trying to think back to some of these games. I, I remember the last last season's away game. That was one of the worst performances yeah. I've ever seen. That 2-0 loss, that was miserable. That was I, I think Matic played in that game. I don't know if Fred it was bad. It was so poor. I think Raptors yeah. played down the middle. It was it was a nightmare. Um I don't know I, I mean I have to a lot of these games elude me, but I, I don't know why it is. I just think West Ham's a gritty team. I really think it's that's it comes down to that. Like their their ethos, you know, for lack of a better term, is grit. That's that's really what it is. Um, and if you can, if you can, in England, if you can fight, you have a chance. In you know, in any match, you know what I'm saying. Um, and they and they tend to do that, you know, relatively well. I mean, to keep them, you know, mid table where they, you know, belong. Uh, but I guess that's the only thing that logically makes sense is they're just a gritty team who know how to, you know, eke out results here and there against the top side. Yeah, I, really? I think that's spot on. I do think they always do manage to grind out some results against the bigger teams at home. I think that's always been the way with West Ham, especially when they've got the fans in the stadiums. I mean, uh, Karthik, you'd be deadly serious about the uh, about the bubbles, but their no, fans do give them. Yeah. <laughs> do give them. I hope there's a West Ham fan watching this who just comes at you after seeing <laughs> um, uh, they, they do they do form a twelfth man. They always they always do no, they bring do. some kind of uh, you know they bring a big atmosphere. To be fair, like we joke about the stadium. Stadium, but they they do know how to support their team. I also don't know what was worth worse, Temmy. Um, the 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 game we lost last year against them, the two 0 or the year before the three one under Mourinho, oh, because geez. that was oh, horrendous oh. as well. Yeah. We've put in some awful shit. But you're right. It's 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 all it's all the um it's, it's a battle. We've lost a battle against them every time in the last last yeah. few years, and that's part of the problem. We've been outshone. Our midfield's been outshone by Mark Noble, which sort of shows where we've been. Don't start me on um, Mark Noble. No, I won't, Carfic. Don't worry, Joe. Uh, let's come over to you. What, what do you think? With no fans in the stadium, does that give us a little bit of, of an advantage? Because as we <laughs> said, they could they could play a part. Um, yeah. Look, sure. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate West Ham. I hate them so much. I the, why? I remember we should have won the title in '96. Barry is probably watching this, and Barry is probably screaming at his keyboard about to type in as well. Um, when all we had to do was beat them and they decided to put up a, a fucking 10 man behind the, the line to stop us from beating them 1 0. And we couldn't beat them and eventually Blackburn won the league. So ever since then, when I was a six year old boy, sh sh you know, shaking my fist in the air, I've sworn vengeance against them. I'm going to get them at some stage. But I think, uh, I think we'll beat them because that tends to happen away from home. I, I'm always wary against West Ham every time we go to play them over the last couple of seasons. Even when they're out of form, I look at my phone when they're playing them. I'm, I'm always like, that they're going to do us, and they tend to to beat us. But I just feel this time because we lost um, last night against PSG. I think I think we got them. I think I genuinely think we do. I just I know they're in great form, but every time Ali's back is against the wall, that's when he pulls out a victory. So it's going to happen. It's just like Karatek never says we're going to win. What are we going to win this time? It's it's everything, league, mate. Um, everything, um, everything. Oh, everything. But, let's not forget though, West Ham are a tough side. They got Declan Rice in there, mate. Oh, don't don't even get me started on Declan Rice. Oh, or Joe, or Joe. Never um, heard of him. Never heard of him. Karthik, let me uh, let me come over to you quickly on the first the the final point and uh, of our three points, and that is uh, Marcus Rashford. He went off against PSG with, by the looks of it, a reoccurrence of that shoulder injury he has uh, he has had and been nursing. Uh, so, how much? Well, how impressed were you with him playing out on the right as he has done the last few games? And uh, how much would he be missed if he is out? 
Yeah, we sort of discussed it on the um, on the match reaction. And we were all pretty impressed with how he played on the right. Um, mm. he, he brings something different. I think Temi's the one who mentioned it in that on the left, he kind of, he gets kind of predictable where he cuts in and, and tries to, to either dribble past a man and take a shot or takes a long shot. Whereas on the right, he tends to have a bit more of a of a playmaking attitude towards things. So he'll try and beat a man, get to the byline, and maybe look for a cutback, or he'll try to play an early crossing. Something a bit different, and it just brings a different side of Rashford, which I think most teams aren't really ready for. With regards to his injury, um, I had a feeling it would come back and get him because I think we brought him back too soon, quite honestly. Um, I think it was... I think it was just after the England, the England game that I said, um, you know, he shouldn't really be playing, but he, he he played, and I thought this is going to come back to bite us at some point. So it's a case of that, but I think we we can manage without him in this one. Um, what formation we play is up to anyone's guess, but we should be okay without him. Joe, what do you reckon about Rashford? Do you reckon he's going to be a big miss? And 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 in terms of his performances recently, I was thinking if he can just improve getting that ball in the box a little bit earlier, because he's got a great right foot. He's got a yeah. brilliant right foot. He can really yeah. cross a ball. We saw that against Southampton when he picked it up on the on the inside on the left yeah. channel and, and I've crossed it with his right. He can cross a ball, so he just needs to have a bit more confidence, doesn't he, to deliver that ball straight away. Yeah, I can agree with you. And like, I think we always seem to forget that Martial is 22 years old. Like, I, I wasn't talking always... about Martial. I was talking about Rashford. Sorry, I know. I fucking sorry. I meant Rashford. Rashford is 22 years old. <laughs> he really is drunk. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am. I am sorry for Joe's behaviour. He is uh, still drunk from last night or tonight, depending on when <laughs> this gets put out. Uh, we will resume to normal service in just a moment once he said a few more words and get on over to Temi. Uh, and where was I? Sorry, no. Um, with, with Rashford, I I think we we always forget he's, he's twenty years old, and and the amount of uh, miles he's put in already is has been exceptional. So I think it's okay for him to go out in and out of form at his age and learn as he's going along and learn the different aspects of his game, at, like his decision making. I think he's doing great in the right hand side. I think that's where he should stay for the time being and the time going on. And um, I think it's grand for him to have a rest as well because so much pressure is being put on his young shoulders so soon in, in, in his life. So I think let him have a break, let him have an injury break because I think we, we are good enough to beat West Ham without him. And hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be back for City. That would be my main concern, but he needs a break. Funny enough, with uh, with this little lag that you've got at the moment, Joe, you look even more drunk when you talk, which is which is great. It's not helping your cause. Uh, tell me, let me let me come over to you. I, I agree with both points there that have been made so far. To, to my credit, I always said uh, that I thought Rashford would make a great right winger, and uh, and it's coming true. I, there's no history or any points of me ever saying that in the past that anyone's <laughs> referred to. Me. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, I've always thought it in my head. You know, when you think something and it comes true, it's one of those like the lottery numbers one day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But on Rashford, Temi, are you impressed with how he's growing as a player and how he adapts? You know, he, he's been pushed out on the right, on the left, sorry, and he's, he's adapted and moulded his game. He played a bit more like a left winger at the closing stage of last season, uh, which we enjoyed seeing him hugging the touchline. He can play as an inside forward. He can play as a number nine and and now delivering out on the right. Will we miss him if he is if he is out of this game? Um, For this particular game, no. Um, And that's not a disrespect to Rashford at all. You know, anyone who knows me knows that's one of my favourite players. Um, but it all, I'm going to guess if I'm a betting man, I'm going to guess Ollie goes back to that diamond formation. You know what I'm saying? Runs it back yes. up uh, versus Southampton. <laughs> he plays Martial and Cavani up top, brings Matic back in. And then it's a kind of a, you know, a different thing. You know what I'm saying? A different approach to the game. Um, so I don't think we'll miss him in this particular game, but I do think that not having him in the side, is definitely is definitely uh let's say if it's for an extended period of time is obviously we're gonna miss him because he's a good player we always miss good players when they're not playing um so for this particular instance if we if i if my guess is correct and we are playing a diamond i don't think we'll miss him um but that being said hopefully the injury is not you know anything too serious and like joe said maybe we can give him a rest for a little bit and see if we can get him back, you know, healthy uh, for the, you know, for the, for this Christmas stretch coming up here. Yeah, there's a lot of games to come, a lot of games to come. Uh, quickly, just a few pointers on West Ham. Carthick, you probably know this already, but Aaron Cresswell uh, is the only player in the Premier League who has more assists from set pieces than James Ward-Prowse. So how important is it that we don't give away set pieces against West Ham? 
this weekend? Very simple as that. Um, they, they're so dangerous from them. I mean, we saw against Southampton how much we struggled against Ward Prowse's corners, and uh, especially on one side they were. Uh, I think it was the in swinging corners. So with Cresswell, I think he likes the I think he likes the out swinging ones. I can't remember. I have to go back and check. Um, but those th- those will be his strength. So we've got to be wary of that. But they've got some good bowlers in there as well. I'm a big fan of um, Pablo Fornals. I think he's a good player and he's playing well for them at the minute. Um, but Ben Rama, what a player he is. So we've got to be wary of them. They can play some football. They've got some decent players there. Um, but it's going to be one of those where great effort, work rate gets you the win over anything else. Yeah, I think Ben Rama came on, didn't he, against Villa and got, a, got, got an assist, assist didn't he, the other day. Literally straight away for, for Jad Bowen, who is also good with the ball at his feet. Yeah. Um, Antonio as well, Joe, isn't afraid to run at defenders, so it's important that obviously Maguire and uh, and Lindelof are on their game. But yeah. but also on top of that, they they play like like a it's it's a it's not a weird formation in some ways, but they're really narrow. They're not very they don't yeah. play very wide. They play like a three uh for like a a, a three three two one in some instances no three four two one in some instances but they keep it quite narrow um yeah. of course Declan Rice and Suchek in the middle of the park as well two players who I'm going to talk to Temi about in a minute because they love a battle and Temi loves talking about a midfield battle so we'll come to that in just a second as we covered that already uh but yeah no but on Antonio they've, they've got threats haven't they and with Benarama they've got someone who wants to take players on so it's important that our defense are on their game yeah, and look, my biggest concern is that we show them too much, too much respect and let them come into the game immediately because that's always our biggest issue is not starting the game in the front foot. So as long as we just, from the moment the ball is tipped off, as in show our dominance and get on top of them and press them, that's why I hope Cavani is starting because he is the king of pressing. So as long as you don't give them a second on the ball and just take ownership from the moment the ball is kicked off, I think we should be fine. But if we allow them to control the game, that's when we'll get into issues. And that's what's happened to us so many times in the past. We've let them have the ball and they've just, um, well, beaten us. But like, hopefully this week, we especially after losing the PSG the other night, I think um, don't show them any respect. Go for the win, go for the jugular and just take all three points. It'd be interesting to see actually where I mentioned Declan Rice a second ago, where he'll play Temi because he can play obviously in the back three, he can play in the middle of the park. And I mentioned about Cresswell, you know, they might deploy him as a left wing back instead of a left centre back for for this one because they, they are used to playing a three at the back. Moyes has consistently played that three at the back. Uh, so we talk about that midfield battle, Rice against Suchek. Should we be worried? Rice and Suchek, should we be worried? Um, not if we play. Um, the way we play, I mean, not if we play the three midfielders who played at Southampton. If we, if I, if we play Matic, Fred, and Donny, I think we should be fine. I genuinely believe that. Um, you know, in there winning the fight, three v two. I thought last game against Southampton, there was a lot of instances. If we had only played, if we had, let's say we played that four two three one that we played against PSG, they would have they would have swarmed us in certain instances. But when you have three midfielders in there versus two, because obviously Donny's kind of the one who hovers a little bit he he, he goes for it and and he he does a little bit of defensive work um i think we'll be fine if he plays that formation if we play two let's say we play um you know matic and fred which would be fine it's just a different it's just a different you know it's a transition isn't it ball from the back to front exactly. we need to we needs to be quicker exactly and that's what Don, that's where donnie comes in and i think it's important that he um, he's in there, so we can, that transition can be quick. And I thought it was, you know, I thought it was quick against Southampton. Obviously, when you're down two 0 your head is kind of all over the place, and you you're angry and you're not really thinking straight. But looking back at that game, I thought we transitioned from back to front pretty well. Shout out to Harry Maguire. Shout out to Victor. I think they did a really good job of, you know, helping that, um, you know, helping that transition. But I think if we if we are three v two in the midfield, I think Suchek's a good player. I'm not about I'm not about to disrespect him. He's a good player. Declan Rice, very, very good player. Potential match for potential, potential match for you. Um, but you know, hey, I think we'll win the battle if we play the way we played against Southampton. It's interesting you say Matic. He might even just be thrown into the side um, against West Ham just to mark Suchek on corners <laughs> because I think he's the only one who could get up to Suchek's not, height because Suchek I mean, is not, a lot of people playing this zonal marking thing he's been doing. That's been uh, me often. I think the rest of the fan base, but uh, we'll see. 
Yeah, it's an odd one, isn't it? But yeah, no, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Guys, we're going to put our starting 11s in yeah. the comments. So make sure you check them out and hit a like on the 11, like on the 11 that you that you like the look of. But I think we'll all be slightly disappointed if he goes for two static defensive midfielders in this one. I think we need to have a little bit more creativity in the middle of the park. Uh, so I'm going to come to you guys with your score prediction and your prediction for first goal scorer. Karthik, you first, mate. I will go 3-0 United. First goal scorer, Martial. <laughs> Did you just hear me talk about our record at, the, at West Ham? Have you not seen our away record so far? We're going to win the fucking league, Ben. Come on. Wow. He's right. He's right. He, in he is right. To be fair, yeah. Karpik is right. Uh, Joe, let me come to you. Yeah, just to upset you, Ben, I'm going to take your scoreline and your player. It's going to be 3-1 three, three, United <laughs> and Mason Greenwood to score first. <laughs> uh, Temi, over to you, mate. I'm going to go with the hard-fought 1-0 win. Um, and the goal scorer is going to be Anthony Mason Greenwood. Anthony, um, Mar- Anthony Martial. Anthony Martial. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm actually going to say, come off the man, come off the hour. <laughs> Rashford's out injured. In steps Mason Greenwood, and he finally gets my goal for me. I'm sticking <laughs> with my Greenwood as first goal scoring. Joe, you're not taking it away from me if he does score. You stole it. You stole it. No Ben's way. like that I'm one gonna... guy who keeps putting the same bet on every week, just hoping yeah. it'll win. It's gonna Ireland come to win the World Cup. Me. That's me. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Never. Uh, and let's uh, let's go for a two-one. I think it's going to be a hard-fought win as well. I think they will score, but I think we will score more. Uh, right. Let's finish it there, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, get involved in the comments as I say like our starting 11s whichever one you like the looks of the most hit a like on that Karthik, Temi, Joe thank you for joining me and uh, come at United let's Bring go on and get that result charge. and sorry just on that remember the lads will be around for the match reaction as well straight after the West Ham game to so get involved with that ciao for now we're going to win the Champions League